This is Solo Travel Talk. Your solo travel advisor is Astrid Clements. Timing is everything, the old saying goes. And especially when you're booking your flights, timing seems to be a make or break proposition. On this episode of Solo Travel Talk, we will be consulting your solo travel advisor, Astrid Clements, who is the maven of travel planning to get all her best tips and recommendations for booking your flights. I'm producer Catherine O'Brien. We know that flights are a major part of your expense when you are booking your travel. So on this episode of Solo Travel Talk, we're going to focus in on Astrid's best practices for getting the flight you want and need. Finding that sweet spot of purchasing your ticket. But if you are a procrastinator, or if this just happens to be last minute travel, Astrid has some recommendations for you too. Here's Astrid. Catherine, thanks for the spot on description of me as the maven <laughs> of free trip planning. This whole show is dedicated to you being the maven. Let me tell you, yes, I am definitely a planner. And really, I guess it stems back to my upbringing and wanting to do well in school. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, I was taught to plan my work and work my plan. And this is a discipline that I learned early on in life. And and I, you know, it, it kind of, when it, I, I got the show notes and how you wanted me to think about the show, I was thinking, now why, well, how, what did this, how did this all start? All my mm. list, to do list and everything. I, I could remember when I was in the third grade, I would create these little graphs that I would put <laughs> on, on the back of my bathroom door. And I would put like all the things that I had to do, whether it was brush my teeth or, do the dishes or whatever, all the things that I had to do, all my little goals or must-dos. And every time I did it, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I had had it, you know, graphed right. I give myself a star. (laughs) And how many stars did I get? So, I mean, really, at a young age, I love to set goals for myself, Mm. like, oh, I want all these Girl, Girl Scout badges, and I have to go do this. This and do that to get this badge, or I wanted to be elected in a, a, a leadership position. Now, how am I going to do this campaign and and everything? And I guess it kind of stems from I, I love to make the world go round, mm. and I just knew that in order to do that, I had to have a strategy to make things materialize. So consequently, I think I evolved into a super planner. Plus, then. Also, in my love of travel, now this started at a young age too. I mean, I remember my first family trip, and it was kind of at the same time, around third or fourth grade. My father took my sister and I to Miami Beach, and oh my God, that was just like, I had never seen people so glamorous and hotels so beautiful and oh just everything I thought gosh there is this world is so cool and I really want to see the world and you know all these different people and and just the whole thing so you know basically my early uh, I guess you would say travel uh, impression experiences with boy Travel is exciting and travel is glamorous. So, you know, I started fa- fantasizing to the point where I thought, oh, well, maybe I could be an ambassador, uh, you know, for a country from the United States. And, and you know, I, I'm talking about all this because this all stems back to me making lists, things to do, blah, 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 how to how it materialized. And I was thinking, I said, you know, in I never really became an ambassador, but maybe in a funny way, I have achieved some of it with Astrid Solo Travel Advisor, my website, my blog, now my uh, my podcast. So, you know, I, I have to say, <laughs> if I wouldn't have been such a goal-oriented person who planned and schemed all my next trips, et cetera, my whole life would have evolved very differently. So bottom line, I believe all great trips start with great plans. (laughs) 
So, you know, an excellent, an excellent trip planning as in any kind of planning, whether it's your business plan or it's mm. in your, you know, how you raise your children. I mean, you have to have, you know, different goals and strategies to get there and things that have to be done in order to get to the next level. But excellent trip planning will, first of all, save you money. I'm telling you, if you say, if you plan for this, that, and the other, and you know how you're going to get here and there, and you know how much it's going to cost or what your alternatives are, I mean, instead of defaulting to something that's very expensive, cab or whatever, well, you could have walked if you would have just planned your day better, and you would have saved, you know, $35, and $35 here and there can stop you from maybe doing something you really want to do. So, Excellent trip planning will save you money. It'll save you from 99% of your potential trip disasters. And those can happen. If you don't think about something, oh, my gosh, that is the thing. It's kind of like Murphy's Law or whatever. Uh, That'll pop up. So planning is very important not to have these big, you know, uh, trip disasters that come out of the blue. Then it does foster really fabulous or much more enriching travel experiences and on the other side of that it reduces solo travel stress not having good experiences because you didn't know how to do this you hadn't planned for this this cost you more money oh my gosh I missed the opera that I bought the tickets because I didn't realize that they still have traffic You know, and I should have planned this or, you know, if I would have been in the area earlier, I could have eaten in the area and walked to the opera. I could have had the concierge arrange to have somebody pick me up at the uh, after the performance so I didn't have to get into a cab that I was afraid to do, whatever. I, you have to plan these things. And a lot of times people think, oh, well, it's no big deal. I'll do that when I get there, blah, blah, blah. But you better think about it before and how you're going to actually execute it because here again, it will relieve a lot of stress. It will save you money. And keep you from a, a disaster. So, you know, I, I really think if the more you plan, you become much more confident and relaxed as a solo traveler. And that really is, um, you know, very important in terms of how any trip materializes. So, and, and also with good trip planning, I mean, you're ready to hit the ground running when you reach a destination. If you haven't planned enough, then you're just think, oh, well, I think today I'll do that. I mean, <laughs> you ought to, before you get there, know what, what you intend to do really every day. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to work like that, but you need to you need to take the time to do that if you really want to get the most out of your solo trips. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I've been doing this now for 40 years, and I know. And, you know, when you're traveling solo the buck stops with you so you have to take care of everything you're going to have to problem solve it if you haven't taken care of it so you know uh if you've planned and you you know what you're going to do and and you've done all your tree pre-trip research etc you can hit the ground running and what i call you'll just you'll have that travel carp deal Mm -hmm. you'll be seizing every moment (laughs) To the best, you know, uh, uh, that you can. I mean, you know, things don't always work out exactly like you plan, but to have a plan is absolutely a must, in my opinion. Well, let's get into the flights because I think this is probably, I'm wondering that this might be a, the biggest pre planning consideration that some of our solo travelers have. So let's talk about flights. What are the Astrid Solo Travel Advisor tips for booking flights? Okay. First, I'll give my tips for booking flights. Then I'll talk about the sweet spot, when to book the flights. And I'll I'll gear, you know, it's not just one when to book it. It's a lot of different whens to book it. Okay. And then you've got, uh, eek, (laughs) <laughs> if I miss the booking sweet spot, what I'll do, what uh, should I do? And I'll give you some suggestions with that. Uh, flights, when you when you wait too late, oh my God, you might not be going on your trip because flights really get expensive 
fast. Yeah. Uh, the closer to when you want to leave. Okay. So here are my tips uh, for booking flights. And before I share the tips, I'd like to say, you know, airline pricing models are so fluid and they are so constantly changing. There are really no set rules or guidelines that, you know, you can can really say that this you're going to get the best ticket at the best price if you do this, that, and the other. What I'm going to go through these 10, they are very good and they will help you. But there are a lot of other things that, that go into ticket pricing. Okay. And it, it's a very, it's, it's almost like a mysterious computer, uh, that is constantly, uh, uh, changing the the odds and the algorithms and and it's like minute to minute it feels like it's just minute to minute oh yeah it is okay so my first tip is you need to use we're in the internet age now so i'm not talking about using uh travel agents but if you don't want to do any of this planning yourself you need to get a real good agent that can go ahead and do it because you got to have a good plan when you travel solo and you can't leave things, you know, uh, undecided or too undecided. So if you don't want to do all this, you do really need to have a good travel agent that will uh, plan it all out for you. Okay. So, but I'm talking about, you know, uh, people who are into technology, et cetera. So you use, uh, some top flight, uh, search engines to begin your research. And what I always like to do is I like kayak. Kayak is great. It shows you a lot of different flights, different airlines, direct flights, multi-stop flights for specific dates, times, prices, etc. So they basically show you all what's available. Okay. So that is, uh, I always like to start with that. When I plan any trip or before I go on any trip, once I decide my destination, I will get a travel journal. And, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can go to the drugstore and get a little uh, small uh, spiral notebook, something you can put in your purse or your backpack but it has enough pages that you can write a lot of stuff down because I believe once you start any of your research, you start writing everything down. It doesn't matter if you're not going to do it, but I guarantee you when you don't write things down, you're going to think, oh, well, I can remember this Mm -hmm. or whatever. You'll go back and you'll have to Google the whole thing again. So it's so much better to start you know, with that travel journal and start writing everything that you're, uh, uh, you're considering when you're doing your research to when you decide on, you know, what flight you're going to take or what hotel, what are some of the things you're going to do, but start out with just putting it all in a journal. Okay. So that's really important. Okay, and Google Flights is also very good to look at different options, okay? So that I do that as a cursory first look to get an idea of times and flights and what airports they go out of, what cities, because you can save money going out of certain cities versus, I mean, it's cheaper to go from New Orleans to New York to Paris than going from Baton Rouge to Paris uh, and getting one ticket. It, it is because, you know, I'll have to make two different, usually uh, connections, maybe one, but it's always more expensive. So it's cheaper for me to drive to uh, New Orleans, take a j- direct jet blue flight to JFK and then hop over the pond with multiple choices of airlines to get to Paris, okay? You'll see those options when you when you first uh, uh, Google and you look at kayak or Google flights. They give you a real good idea, okay? Then 
once you decided, yeah, I, I, the flight is not prohibitive, I'm going to go. You use either Momondo, of oh, which yeah. on my website I have a whole page, the destination page and its trip planning, etc. And we hook up to Momondo. Super, 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 basically travel agent, digital travel agent. Gives you so much information about how much things cost. It helps you budget mm-hmm. going to a certain place. Gives you all the flight options and what's so good about momondo is they put the budget airlines on momondo you don't see the budget airlines on those others so momondo i love okay but even i don't want to say better than momondo but excellent is skyscanner skyscanner will show you the best the cheapest and the uh, fastest flights with all the price comparisons. So uh, basically, when you're ready to really book, go either to Momondo or Skyscanner. That's where you want to go from that point to book. Now, I say, you know, start with Kayak and Google Flights. You might end up, you know, uh, using them. They'll direct you to what airline, etc. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to keep getting on the internet and searching the flights and searching this, that, and because I'm telling you, they all know AI, artificial intelligence, is so sensitive now. Every time you, you search, that you're, the price of your ticket's going to go up a little bit because they know you want to go. And it's just a, it's a, it's, it's the way those uh, algorithms are. So you might want to search. If you want to search more than one time or too much on one computer. And then book the flight on a totally unrelated computer when you're ready to purchase it. Because you'll probably get a, a, a significant savings by doing that. Not always, but, you know, it depends on how many tick, how many seats are left and all these kinds of different things. But if you keep searching, they know you want to go. That price goes up, 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 up every time you do it. Uh, and some people use uh, private browsing mode. I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that tech savvy. But don't let you know, all these people know you want to go to Paris <laughs> because that ticket will go from 800 to 1100 yeah. fast. Okay. Sweet spot. Now I'm going to talk more about this, uh, the total sweet spot later, but the basic sweet spot is to buy an airline ticket 50 days before the flight. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. And you know, if you do it, then you, you, you're going to get at least somewhere in the neighborhood of a 10% or more than the average fare if you do it uh, 50 days before you leave, okay? The next tip is the cheapest day to fly. Domestically is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. The most expensive days to to fly domestically are Friday and Sunday, okay? Then internationally, basically, weekday is cheaper than the weekends. I like to fly Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, then the cheapest time of day to fly is either early morning, the first flight out, or that red eye, the last flight out. Those two are are really usually the cheapest. And surprisingly, you can usually get direct flights during those times. But also, uh, flights during meal times, they hmm. tend to be cheaper. It's called flying hungry or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, that is so you be mindful of that. Hmm. Okay. Then the cheapest months to fly, January, February, and March, because this is typically the low season all over for travelers, and especially if you want to go long hauls, 
January and February are really good. You get some really cheap uh, tickets then, or the, as cheap as they can get. Okay, direct flights are more expensive than multiple stops. Now, that just is, most people understand that, but you can really save money. Like, if you go from New York to Paris direct, say it'll cost you $900. But if you go New York, Dublin, Paris, the flight from New York to Dublin will be somewhere around 600 and then from Dublin to Paris, it'll be about around 60 so that's 660 versus $900, mm. and that'll save you $240. So it behooves you to look at those alternatives mm. if you're willing to spend more time in route. Now, make sure if you have connections that you allow for about three hours uh, to make those connections because there's weather and there's <clears throat> mechanical and all kinds of things that can go can go wrong. So uh, that is one way to save money, even if you go business class. So, and then the next uh, also kind of with that is mixed airlines. If you fly Delta and say Virgin uh, uh, to Paris, or uh, I mean, I'm just making this up now, but if you mix up the airlines, a lot of times you'll get a, a, a cheaper fare because it's kind of like you're working with the... the the airlines are working together to fill their planes up so they're able to pass on somewhat of a discount. I think that's how it works to the uh, ticket holder. Okay, then uh, also, next one, number seven, book your flights on Tuesday between 2 and 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Supposedly, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard is the best time to book a domestic flight. And don't buy your tickets on the weekend because they uh, definitely tend to be pro uh, uh, more expensive. If you buy them on Saturday or Sunday, I mean, everybody's on the Internet looking at, oh, well, I think I'm going to go to Paris. I'm going to go. I mean, you know, the flights are going to be more expensive. Tuesday, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, supposedly, especially domestically for domestic flights, is the best time to buy a ticket. Now I know why we never record on Tuesday at 2.30. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. All right. Then this is something that I read. I, I, I'm i not experienced with this, but I, I want to throw it out there. I, you know, uh, if I'm not right, and somebody knows that definitely I'm not right, I'd like you to, to share it with me. But the larger the plane and the newer the plane, the pricing tends to be cheaper because of the gas savings. Oh. Plus, they want to fill the plane up. So the Dreamliners and the big air buses that ha are fuel efficient tend to do better than the older big 747s that are gas guzzlers. So I'm not sure about that, but I must say that the very good flights that I've been getting the last couple of years have been on the Dreamliners. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So probably the way they created the plane, et cetera, they, they knew all these metrics to begin with. So, um, you know, it's the price of gas, a lot of it. And then it goes into the demand and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then the next is budget carriers have the lowest fares. So, you know, uh, consider them. But when you consider them, you have to consider all the add-ons because they can add up and then they'll be more expensive than, a you know, uh, a regular like a Delta ticket because they'll charge you for check bags. Then if you want a meal, you'll have to pay for the meal. And for the drinks, even for water, <laughs> pillows, blankets, headphones, uh, carry-ons. That's another thing. They'll charge you to bring a carry-on on. Priority boarding. Yeah, you, that kind of makes sense. And then this is one that really just, I can't get over this. Printed boarding pass. No. Oh, yeah. They'll charge you for a printed boarding pass. They're starting to get that nitpicking. 
That's really ridiculous. That's so true. that's a budget airline for you. So you have to know, you have to add up all this little five dollars here, twenty dollars here, blah blah, fifty dollars here. Phew, it's not going to be that budget. Okay, but I found the best budget line airlines in the U.S. I love JetBlue and I like Southwest because they try hard, you know, and they Great get service. you there, and they're usually not they're not late, you know, or they they have a great attitude. Both of those I found. Then also I I kind of like Spirit Airlines. I mean they are moving and grooving, and they're ordering new planes, and they have a very upbeat attitude too. Uh, I had a little bit of an experience with them. I ended up with a free trip to Cartagena. I had money to eat. They helped me reroute myself. I didn't have to pay any baggage fees. I only was like two hours late. You know, it was a mix up on the on the booking. They actually overbooked, and so I, I wasn't able to get on the plane. But they handled me like I was a VIP. I mean, so I really do like Spirit. Um, um, so consider them. I've had nothing but good experiences with spirit. International budget airlines that everybody talks about, I haven't been on, are Norwegian Air and Wow. They all have great mm. reviews. Air Asia is another one for, uh, you know, the Far East and Ryan Air and EasyJet. Now, with Ryan Air and EasyJet, they uh, they love to put those add ons. So know that. And like I said, not all search engines offer the tickets on the budget airlines. So you're going to need to contact them directly, either through the website or by phone. But you know, if you want to save money, uh, consider them. That will help you save money for sure. Okay, the next is, you know, everybody pretty much knows this, who likes frequent flyer or reward miles. And, you know, most people who really love to travel, they're into these miles. But when you can use frequent flyer miles, airline, uh, you know, preferred airline miles, Amex or or other credit card rewards, I mean, you get a free ticket or a free upgrade. And all I can say is, Every time I do that, I could just go, oh, this is it. So what I do is I put everything that I can charge on a monthly basis on my American Express and my, I love the Chase Sapphire card because sometimes they give you double and triple miles and I pay those monthly uh, costs, food, groceries, you know, um, gas, you know, just the stuff that you would have to pay that you would write a check for or whatever. But I would rather, or put it in your debit card, I'd rather do it on that credit card so I get those miles. And, oh, I have, I mean, I'm getting ready to go to Paris, and I have a free airline ticket, and and my hotel stays completely paid for at a five-star gorgeous hotel because of my frequent flyer miles with the Chase Sapphire. So let me tell you something. That adds up, and you'll, you'll travel more. That's all I can say. You'll travel more. Then there are also programs with these speci- uh, specific or uh, airline credit cards like the Delta American Express that if you have a Delta American Express uh, and you book directly with Delta and you use this Delta American Express card, free baggage, doesn't matter, you know, you can up to like nine pieces of baggage. Nine! Now, yeah, so, uh, but you have to do it. You can't book through, you know, uh, 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 aggregator site or whatever. You have to book directly with Delta from their website and you have to pay for it with the American Express Delta card. So there's certain things that get you a lot of, uh, mileage for free or a lot cheaper. Okay. So those are my 10 flight booking tips. But I said, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, the system, because of artificial intelligence, is too smart. And and many times all these old tricks really don't hold true because they, they're they booking, it's changing based on passenger demand, weather, 
then, you know, uh, time of day, competitor prices, that's changing minute by minute too. Then, you know, if there's a major festival or a, or event, that changes it. And, of course, time of the year. So this affects the price all the time. So one of the things that people do on some of the sites that allow it is they'll put a price alert for a particular price. And if it gets to that price, you'll be notified. But let's talk about the ultimate sweet spot because that's what you wanted to know. Yeah. Okay. This is it. You purchase, let's just say you go into Paris. You purchase your ticket on Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 50 days before your departure. You select either the first or the last flight out on a Tuesday or Wednesday that's close to that 50-day, and you return on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Saturday. And travel during either the month of January, February, or March. Now, that will get you basically the sweetest ticket you can to go to Paris, okay? Also, the other options, you can have multiple stops. You can look at multiple carriers within this framework that I just gave you or a budget carrier. And uh, I talked about the larger or new, newer aircraft. I'm not so sure about that, but I think that is true. So that's the sweet spot, Catherine. <laughs> so if you really want a hyper plan and really get it down, like, uh, like I'm going to just try to hit that bullseye, that's it, basically. Okay. So, now, if you miss a sweet spot, yeah. what are you going to do? Because <laughs> there's not really a lot of good alternatives or strategies. But here are some of what I suggest. Because a long time ago, you could just show up and fly standby. Mm. I mean, when I first started traveling for at least 20-something years, you could go standby. I mean, there even were people who were doing couriers. They were trying to get all kinds of cheap, cheap tickets. So, But those days are gone. So if you've missed something, you just might as well go straight to Skyscanner and put a price alert on and try to get something that you can afford, okay? Yeah, budget airline is also, you know, uh, if they have a route, it's probably your best bet if you want to get a reasonable flight. And then be flexible. I mean, you know, you might have to go from New Orleans to uh, Salt Lake City to New York to Paris <laughs> to get something and fly in for like 36 hours or something ridiculous. But if that if all the if that's the only ticket you could afford, oh, that yeah. might be it. And you know, so and you might have to go into other airports and and things like that. So just basically be flexible because you have shot yourself in uh, well, the toe, <laughs> not totally the foot, but you're you're in you, you you probably can't afford the flight. That's usually what is prohibitive when those flights get so expensive, and yeah. they can they can do it fast. Okay. Then there's something else, and I've never really used these people because I'm a planner and I don't let this happen. <laughs> okay. There's cheapflights.com or justfly.com, and they will give you a next day ticket with a mystery airline that you have to call directly to buy the ticket. I've never used this, but this is out there. Okay. Uh, so you can consider doing that. Then, of course, if you normally fly business class or premium economy, you'll just have to go down to the economy. Because I can tell you, I googled Paris uh, a, a little over oh, a couple of days ago. So say 10 days before my departure on November the 4th. A business class ticket was $10,000 then Good. versus it was 2800 So 
this is what it happens when you wait till the last moment. <laughs> you, you, you're going to have to be in the back of the bus <laughs> if you get on the bus, on the plane. Now, the mystery, you can buy a mystery ticket was out there for $4,500. Now, I have no idea what that entails, but it probably goes from New Orleans to Salt Lake oh, to, to Toronto, maybe back down to Washington, D.C. <laughs> I mean, you never know, but it's a mystery mystery ticket so (laughs) yeah yeah and it but they're trying to fill up planes that have one little seat here and one if they can make this you know uh a jigsaw puzzle work they'll create a a weird ticket that's cheaper because no uh, rational person would want to do this (laughs) but it could save you money yeah I, I am not at the stage of life where I can take a $4,500 mystery. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I well, just, but I mean, if you but wait. If that's to, your only option, though. I yeah, guess. and you yeah. refuse to not go business class. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. here it is. This is a reality <laughs> if, if you wait too late. Okay. Then, you know, they have tickets called bereavement tickets or emergency tickets, like say if somebody dies in your family. You know, you can call up the airlines and and tell them the circumstance. So you'll have to give the name of the relative, who the doctor was, the funeral home. But they'll they'll discount the ticket. You know, mm. ten fifteen percent. It's different for different airlines. But some people don't know what's out there. And say you have a loved one that's passed away. Like, God forbid, in in Paris, and you have to go there real quick. (laughs) You know, so you're going to want to plead for any kind of discount that you can. And and the airlines have some leeway. If you talk to managers and everything, they can make certain things happen. So just know that that's an option. But also know that, mm, you know, it's still probably going to be very costly. Then also you can bundle your airfare with your hotel. That might save you some at the very end uh, because the hotel rates will be going down. So, uh, you know, do that or try that. But, you know, with, with flight ticket purchases, do not procrastinate or wait till two weeks before to book a flight because I guarantee you, the price will just, you'll just, it'll hit you in the gut. You'll say, well, I guess I'm not going. Because it, it's, it's, it's way too expensive. But some people end up having to, to pay that, and the airlines can get it, so they know it. Once you have your tickets booked, of course you need to put some luggage onto that plane. If you are facing some packing, Astrid has an amazing packing list just for you. All you have to do is go to her website, astridtravel.com. Right there on the homepage, she has a place you can put in your email and you can download that packing list right away. The packing list is designed to help you reduce the stress of your travels. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify. We love Spotify. Any fine place the podcast can be found. We love people who subscribe to the show, not only because it brings you the show weekly, seamlessly, but also because that helps push the show out to other potential solo travelers. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to hearing about all the fabulous tickets that you buy using these tips. We'll see you next week on Solo Travel Talk. Thank you for listening to Solo Travel Talk. Follow Astrid on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. To learn more about Astrid or Solo Travel Advisors, visit our website, astridtravel.com.